When I was about 26 weeks pregnant in February of 2004, I woke up one day and just randomly threw up for no reason. My husband and I jumped in the car and we went to the hospital and the minute they took my blood pressure, my blood pressure was 200 over 110. He made a very difficult decision to deliver the baby. Her name was Grace and she was born at one pound 11 ounces. Because she was delivered so early as a result of the preeclampsia, she ultimately died from it. Mortality for preeclampsia is through failure to diagnose. We have still ways to go in understanding preeclampsia as, as a disease. As researchers, there's things we can do now with what we know. Blood pressure tends to increase later in pregnancy and under normal circumstances. We're not sure, is this preeclampsia or is this just a normal course? We really need a good test that will tell us one way or another, does this patient have a disease that we need to deal with? Or can we safely say, no, you're okay, you can go home. You know, that's a big, big relief. I came to uh, Yale School of Management for the Executive MBA program, and I happened to sit in on a Yale Entrepreneurial Institute uh, uh, presentation, one of those presentations where they try and pair uh, business students with uh, innovators at the university, and it was Arena presenting that day. We had the idea of using urine of women with preeclampsia to find out if we could find proteins in that urine that could inform a diagnosis better than it's done today. That led us to the diagnostic test. Fortunately, this problem is getting worse over time now. Preeclampsia is an $8 billion health problem that we see, and that's a conservative estimate. It would translate into better care for the patient. There's no blood work involved. I had a very close relationship with the Office of Cooperative Research here at Yale. So one day they asked me, why don't you pitch? I didn't even know what a pitch was. So <laughs> I made slides, which probably didn't look like a pitch. <laughs> they looked more like a scientific presentation. Oh, yeah. But uh, I thought it was a, a, a great idea to, um, you know, put me out there and say, this is the idea and see who, who picks it. We incorporated in January of 2014. Uh, after finishing the business plan and realizing, okay, this is real, this is holding water, we need to do this. Just Vision is one of the companies that we're really excited about because we've been able to take resources and connections throughout industry and be able to put them into the company. So one of the things that we have is something called the YEI Innovation Fund. We put in $100,000 and after that, she was able to attract $7 million of additional capital. Cooper Surgical was approached by Wendy Davis, who's the CEO of Just Vision, just about a year ago. We felt the most effective relationship was to take our financial resources to be able to provide them them for the company as an investor to allow them to complete that uh, fully functioning uh, product, which would include getting the regulatory approvals, gearing up for manufacturing, and gearing up for commercialization. It's, it is remarkable to think that a handful of us can make this kind of a difference in, in maternal care across the world. There is a real opportunity. I think that's one of the pieces that we get very excited about at Yale and certainly at YEI, is having that greater impact. It was a great opportunity to work with Yale and it's a great bastion of new scientific breakthroughs and new ideas that can really benefit society. But I want to emphasize the reason we made the investment is because we believe in the technology and, behind, and the people behind the technology. How are we going to solve problems? We're going to solve problems by uh, educating students, by conducting basic applied translational research, by taking it to the next step and supporting commercial ventures when it makes sense that will uh, address those problems in the world. 